Hello everyone, uh, this is Carl Shufflet from Infratistics, and in this short video I'm going to talk about the WPF XAM Data Grid Control Configurator and the field editors and the kind of things you can do with it. Alright, so before we actually dive into using the configurator to configure some advanced scenarios, let's take a look at the running application. This will give us the same context here. Alright, so I'm going to go to the nested layout and um, uh, essentially, this is exactly the same app that you can get, uh, the one I keep, I've talked about in other videos. All I've done here is I've just removed some fields to make it easier to understand what I'm teaching, okay? But your, your app that you have has the same uh, data grid. It just has more fields, and it's nested. All right, so Carl, wh wh what do you mean about these uh, scenarios? Well, the first one is I want to show you that we have a ship state, and here it's a combo box. All right, so it has all the all the uh, of the various uh, state abbreviations. All right, this one is is bound to an enumeration. So we've got a a, a status field which is a, a an integer, but we've data bound it to an enum, and you can see that enum is rendered at runtime. Um, over here we've got just a checkbox and a you know your standard date picker. Really cool. Order status. So what this is, this is a collection of complex objects that you can pick from. All right. Another common scenario. This column has a um, a mask where you've got two letters and then four digits. I'll show you how to set that up. This is just the standard um, the way you you would enter uh, numbers. Uh, without the dollar, you know, without the monetary sign, and here's one with the monetary sign. The only difference is this just happens to be a currency editor, so you get the dollar sign and the and the digits for free. Um, and this one is just an editor, and I've set up these parameters. I'll show you how I did that. And then this is a a, a template column. So if I click the template column, see when it's green, I'm in editing, and when I complete my edit, and I go to another. Uh, uh, column, I, I have a little trigger there so you know that it's off or you know we're not in editing mode. All right, so let's close this now. And you can see here, here's our, our template column. Let, let, let's just go and cover that one right now. Um, let's see, where are we at with our template column? Okay, yeah, here we are. All right. So here's our template field. Now, the XAM Data Grid Control Configurator doesn't let you edit a, a template column, but if you have a template column, it, it, you won't lose your 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 XAML. All right, and so that, that's something we had to enable. So essentially, when when this uh, field gets loaded by the configurator, even though we don't let you edit the, the templates that are within here, say so it has a display template and an edit template. This is where the red and green came from, you know, just based on you know what you were doing. We copy the templates, but we don't lose them. All right, but we don't let you edit them either, because obviously we, we couldn't do that. All right, so let's come up here um, just to remind you about the collections that we're going to be binding to. So here, customer statuses is just the list of strings. Here we've got uh, orders. Here we've got, uh, well, that's our collection of orders. Here we've got this uh, order status combo box data items and sports combo box data items, and then here's states. So states is easy. It's just a collection of strings like customer statuses. Now, the order status combo box items, these are the complex objects I was telling you about. So whenever I'm creating applications from my combo boxes, I always have this single type. And, and whenever I create my apps, so whenever I create my apps, uh, my real world apps, I always have this uh, combo box state item type. And obviously, there could be more um, properties on here. But for this simple app that we're working on, we, we just have a key and a text property. And, and so by using this single ubiquitous type, it, it, it just makes it easier so you don't have to have lots of types. Uh, just to get a combo box to come up. Now, 
if you need behavior in your type, then you can go ahead and use this type as your base type and just derive your type and then put the behavior in you need as required, right? Just regular object-oriented programming. Now, what's interesting is customer status, list the string. Well, let's go see what this really is. So here's customer status. As it comes from my data grid sample data generator. I'm gonna go over here and go to the implementation on that. And I want you to see that it is an enum here, right? So customer statuses comes from the enumeration of status. All right, let's go take a look at that. And here you can see those same values that we had before, right? That was in the running app. That's where these come from. Now, if we look over here, a customer, and we wander down here to the status property, see status is actually an enum property. And you're going to be pleasantly surprised how easy it is to data bind in the XAM data grid to an enum property. Just by doing what I just told you here. So here's our, our, our enum. And then we're just going to create a list of the enum names, put them in a string. And we're going to data bind that to right here uh, to our uh, combo box. And then it'll just work. It's amazing, right? All right, so let's quit talking about it and, and, and let's actually go do it. So here's my XAM data grid. I'm going to go and open up the configurator and let me show you the, the our, our scenarios, right? Okay, so the first scenario, customer name, there's nothing really special there. But let's just go and click on it just for a second. So you could see that it's a text box. You know it's a text box. You know you can switch the kind of editor that you have. What I want you to notice over here is how the properties are laid out for all the fields. So, for instance, if it's uh, irrespective of the type of field that it is, the very first category is always the properties that are specific to that editor. So, notice this is a text field. These are properties that you would find on, on a text field editor. Let me just go down to, like, our Boolean editor. And you're going to notice here that it's only got one edit, one property, the is three state, right? That's, that's going to be different from all of these common field, label, behavior, these are all common to all fields, okay? So every field type that you click on over here, they're all the same in the bottom part, but the top part is what's different, the first part. And this is where you're gonna be changing some of the properties uh, that are for the editor itself. And then down here, you would modify these if required for your scenarios, like turning editing on or off on a particular field if you wanted to, for instance, or or whatever, doing resize at a very granular level, right? All right, so let's go up here to ship state. Now, <clears throat> ship state uh, in in here, obviously the combo box doesn't run at, at, at design time, right? I mean, the, the, obviously, right? <laughs> so the combo box is not running at, at design time. But we can set this up so that when our XAML gets generated, it works the way we would expect. All right, so how did I do that? Well, what I did is I went and I just set an item source for my states. So how did you do that, Carl? Well, I clicked here. I'm going to go ahead and reset this binding. All right, so now, I'm, uh, so now it's reset. Let's go set it. So this is for states. And notice down here, I have states. That's my collection, and it's it's an innumerable string. So I'm just going to click on states, and I'm going to create my binding. And that's it. Now, notice that there is no display member path available, and there's no value path available, right? Well, why is that, Carl? Because this, is, this collection is not of complex objects. It's just a list of strings. So that's why you don't need to fill those in, or, and you can't fill them in. Now, let's go to customer status. Now, if you look here real close, see it says customer status. It says status enumeration. So this field, um, this where it shows you the fields, it's telling you your data type, right? So kind of gives you uh, a uh, an indicator, right? Okay, yeah, that's right. This is an enum, or or that this is an enumeration. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reset this, and now let's go recreate the binding real quick. All right. Create the binding. Now, customer statuses. You see how I named this? 
exactly what it is. Um, I strongly recommend in your view models that you make it real easy to use the tooling to find the correct collections for your bindings for your combo boxes. So in this case, I just went and picked customer statuses, right? It's real easy. Customer status, customer statuses. It's an enumerable string. I create my binding and I'm done. Now, what I need to explain to you is you see where it has enum value A or enum, it's enum value able right here. I'm going to change the text of that. I, I, I don't like the way that, that, that that's created. Anyways, what this has done is it knows it's an enum. So dynamically, when the, when the text gets, when these values get created, it creates values that are, uh, that are actual enum values inside the dynamically generated assembly that this data is binding to. All right. So the, the way the configurator works is when it cranks up and you select over here, let, let's just wander back here and you select for your orders. It goes and looks at that whole class structure and it dynamically builds an assembly and then fills it up with values. So in the case of an enum, I, I, you know, I just have enum value and it should just be enum value a not able, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll go fix that, that text there. All right. Now, so I've shown you how to bind here, right? Customer statuses. And because this is an enum, the exam data grid automatically handles taking care of this. All right. And like all configurators, if you hold your mouse over the, um, over the property of this data bound, it, it actually tells you it, that it's a field binding and the path is customer status. So that's kind of cool, right? All right, and, and when I, we'll, we'll go back out to the XAML, I'll explain what field binding is. All right, so now date order, the other things you can do with it, like on, let, let's talk about the date, is that there's all kinds of little properties here. So here's something where you can have a spin mode, where, you know, so this is kind of cool. So you can say, uh, you can turn on the little spinner guy, right? And then, so that's the spinner, and then you can make it go up and down, right? Okay, so now it's on year. Now, if I click on the date, then I can just, the little date guy will move. See how that works? So this is kind of cool, right? So there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with our controls. You want to read the documentation, but the UI here allows you to edit and, and work with it. All right, so I've already talked about the checkbox. It, it, it's three state. Here's an order status. That's just an uh, uh, um, order status. This particular order status, this is one of those items that we're data binding and it's a complex object, right? All right, so let me reset this and you'll see those things will clear. So order status, I come over here, order status combo box data items is an I enumerable of combo box data item. All right, so I click on this and I set up my binding. Now what's happened is this is a complex object. It tells you right here, it's a complex object, right? It, it is a combo box data item. So because it's a complex object, you have to now say, oh, display member path. Well, what display member path am I using? Well, uh, my display member path is text. My value path is the key. And now when I generate the XAML, this will work at runtime perfectly. Okay, the next one is accounting code. So in this case, what I did is I went and read how the, I, I read how everything works. And I've got this, um, Two, two question marks with a dash and pounds. So what this does, obviously when I'm generating code, when I'm doing code generation, uh, we're, not, we're not looking at a mask, right? Because the code's generated when you set up the original binding and you know we can't respond to that. But <clears throat> because it's a string property, we put strings in there. But at runtime, you saw that it worked great. So that's pretty neat. All right, total. So let's say that you wanted to have, a, a, you want it to be a, like a, a number with the comma and the dots and, and your decimal point. So in this case, I just used a mask that's available to you, a double six two, right? So I, I've described it. And again, this is all in the online help, how to be successful with this. Now, if you always want the dollar sign, then just go ahead and grab yourself a currency editor and you're done. It just puts it in and everything just works. And then here's our template field. 
Now notice there is no extra property or extra category up here for temp field. Well, well that's because it doesn't have one. And then this here is just all, uh, you know, you, you really can't do anything with it, but at least we show it to you in the designer. All right, now let's go back out to our XAML real quick and, and let's review a few things that, that, uh, that, that were generated for us. So combo box field. In this case, we have an item source of states field binding. Okay, Carl, what's a field binding? Well, in the old days, what we used to have to do in order to get to from within a field, in order to get to the um, the view model, is we had to use a data context spy. Some of you probably remember that. Some of you probably have code that does that. What field binding does is it just allows you, it, it's a shortcut way, it's a real simple way to just use the field binding. And what that means, this field binding exposes the underlying data model, which in this case would be the data source would be up here. This data source is on the view model, is on the data context for the XAM data grid, right? So right here, what this does, this gives you direct access to the view model, and so I can use the collections on there. That's why, uh, that's what field binding does. So now here we got combo box, and here we've got this alternate binding. Remember that syntax we had before? Because we're, we're, we have a complex object, we're dotting into status. All right, this uses name binding. This is using the alternate binding. It even tells you. And then our item source in this case is just our field binding back to our customer statuses. This status is actually an enum, but we're binding to a list of names from the enum here, and it just works. All right, so down here we got the combo box field. Here is an order status combo box date items, display member path text, value path key. And then, of course, the rest of these you can just look at. Now, this little business here is required by by WPF that anytime you put these right here, when you use these little brackets here like this, you, you need to escape them like this. Otherwise, it'll think it's a binding markup extension. See how the little bracket here and here is that, that that's a binding markup extension or that well, that's a markup extension. This one here escapes it right so that it, it won't treat it as a markup extension and that's why it works all right so i hope this video has, has helped you to get started with the, the various field editors that are provided by the xam data grid control configurator have a wonderful day and enjoy controls from infradistics thank you